Hey guys, Maywit here, and today I have some more stories for you. These stories all took place while I was in middle school, and this first one happened while I was on the bus ride home. I was playing on my 3DS, and these two 6th grade girls behind me were being annoying and commenting on slash making fun of everything that I was doing in my game. I asked them to stop a few times, but they denied that they were talking about what I was doing and said it was a coincidence that it happened to line up with what was going on in my game. As this went on, I was getting more and more upset, so I decided to do something that would prove that they were, in fact, watching me and talking about what I was doing. You see, there is a game back then that I loved called Abobo's Big Adventure. In the game, Abobo fights through a bunch of NES games and characters to save his son. The final boss is Lil Mac from Punch-Out, and after beating him in that fight, Abobo pulls out the Nintendo Power Glove and uppercuts Lil Mac so hard that it decapitates him and his head flies throughout several NES games before landing on the flagpole for Mario. Although the graphics are 8-bit, the close-up of the decapitation is actually pretty graphic. I won't show it here, but feel free to look it up on your own. Anyways, I had the final boss and ending recorded on my 3DS because I didn't have a cell phone back then, and I wanted to show my friends what the game was like. So I pulled the video up on my 3DS and skipped to right after the boss fight. Sure enough, when a Bobo pulls out the power glove and puts it on, the words, It's so bad, appear on the screen. And I hear the girls comment, Oh wow, that glove is so bad! Yeah, look at it, it's so bad! And that's how I know they're watching. Sure enough, once the close-up slow-mo decapitation takes place, the two of them scream something like, "Ew, what the heck? And I say, aha! I knew you were watching my screen making fun of me. And the two of them sat there frozen, watching Little Max's head fly throughout a bunch of games before coating the Mario flagpole in blood as it slid down. In hindsight, that was probably a bit messed up, but statistically speaking, they've probably seen worse in a movie, video game, or TV show at that age. I don't know, you could watch it for yourself and decide. I am a bit surprised though that I didn't get in trouble for that. I was in the front seat of the bus, so there is no way that the bus driver didn't hear all of this go down. I guess either he didn't care or thought that what I did was a fair retaliation, if not pretty clever. Unfortunately, my friend was not as lucky as I with his bus situation. On the way to school, he was sitting with one of my other friends and playing on his 3DS. The kid that was sitting in front of him decided to be a dick and put his hand over the screen so that my friend couldn't see what he was doing in his game. My friend asked him to stop it and he didn't, so he brushed the kid's hand away. The kid then started beating the crap out of him and repeatedly punched my friend in the mouth. And my friend had just gotten braces, so needless to say, that hurt quite a bit, and he actually started bleeding. He did his best to defend himself, but he's pretty small and the kid was not, and so my friend got wrecked. The bus driver must have radioed the school or something, because when they got to school, both my friend, whose face was bloody, and the other kid, who didn't have a scratch, were immediately escorted to the principal's office. Can you guess what happened next? If the words you think of are zero tolerance, then congratulations, you are correct. Both my friend and the other kid were suspended for a day. And my middle school wonders why bullying is such a huge problem there. If you remember my story that I told a few years back where my friend and I sabotaged our state tests on purpose, Stuff like this is why we did that. I'll put a link in the description to that story if I can find it. And by the way, when I said that my middle school had a major bullying problem, I mean it. Ken my grade and his family sued the school district for half a million dollars due to their inadequate response to said bullying. I read the allegations in the lawsuit and looking at them, it looks like the guidance counselor and principal did the same thing for this kid that they did for my friends and I, which was to tell us to ignore the bullying and give the bullies a slap on a wrist, if any punishment at all. Which is pretty bad because, like, if an adult did some of the things that the bullies are listed as doing in these allegations, they'd be put on a certain registry. Sadly, I can't find any info on how the lawsuit ended. All I could find was that the school district was able to get some of the claims dismissed, but not all of them. Fortunately, the kid seems to be doing a lot better now, at least by looking at his Facebook. Anywho, sorry that this video took a dark turn. I just happened to remember all of that as I was typing my friend's story. I wanted this video on a lighter note, so here's one more story from my middle school. We had a home economics class that everyone had to take in 6th grade and 8th grade. In 8th grade, one of the units in the class was cooking. And for this unit, each group, which was 4 people, had to follow a recipe to make a meal, eat it while using good table manners, and then do the dishes. Well, due to their poor behavior, the 4 jocks in the class were put into separate groups from each other. During the cooking unit, the whole class, including the jocks, wanted the jocks to be in their own group. 
Everyone was sick of the jocks screwing things up or not helping at all because this class is stupid. And the jocks wanted to be with their friends rather than with the people who hated them. Uh, one day, the teacher agreed to our demands, and what you'd expect to happen is exactly what ended up happening. The three non-jock groups, including mine, did very well. The jocks, however, put on a show that put anything you've seen on Hell's Kitchen to shame. First off, it took them forever to actually get started, because all four of them were used to everyone else doing all the work. Eventually, they divvy out their tasks, but they can't even manage to do the simple stuff. The teacher was keeping a close eye on them since she knew that they were going to have the most problems, and she would loudly reprimand them every time they screwed up. Uh, the screw-ups include dumping a crap ton of whatever seasoning we were using when the recipe only called for a pinch, preheating the oven to the wrong temperature, setting the table wrong, and when doing the dishes, rather than like dump and scrape the extra sauce from the bowl before washing it, they put the entire bowl in the dishwater which caused the water to turn red and the teacher made them drain the sink and refill it because it can't be used to clean anything at that point. By the time that last one happened, everyone else was done. We were all just watching and snickering at them at that point. Um, what's better is that the home economics teachers were the one group of teachers who were not afraid to fail or punish the jocks. So they failed that assignment and one of them actually had to rewrite a girl's report because he crumpled it up because he was mad and... The reason he crumpled it up was because our teacher didn't accept any papers that were wrinkled, so he was trying to like make her rewrite it, but uh, the teacher saw him do that, so she made him rewrite the report for her. Luckily for the jocks, though, you had to be failing in two classes to not be allowed to participate in sports, and I can't help but wonder if the home economics teachers are the reason why that number is two instead of one. But yeah, those are my stories for today. I hope you enjoyed them. If you did, leave a comment down below, and please like, share, and subscribe for more.